All right, so we're uh, in the after hours show. Uh, Jared's uh, back here to join us. Uh, and uh, well, Jared, that was a pretty good interview right off the bat uh, talking about interests. I want to pick your brain on a lot of other interesting things. But uh, I want to first uh, circle back. Uh, I mean, you, you live out in uh, Myrtle Beach. I had a chance to do lunch with you uh, when, uh, when I was out there in South Carolina. And uh, it was a good time. And uh, what, what made you uh, want to go out there to Myrtle Beach and uh, settle down over there? Is, is that uh, where you're from or what, what inspired you to be out there? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't really my idea. It's worked out great. I love it here, but it definitely was not my idea. So, at, you know, this was back in 2010. I was in New York and my wife is a professor at Princeton. And uh, she had a five-year appointment. And once that appointment was up, it, was, she, it wasn't a 10-year job. Uh, once that appointment was up, she had to go somewhere and she applied for a bunch of jobs and, you know, Coastal Carolina University was open. And she says, what do you think about going to Myrtle Beach? I'm like, I don't know. I never, I've never been there, but it's got beach in the name. So how bad can it be? Uh, and uh, we kind of moved down here sight unseen. And that was back in 2010. So we've been here for a long time. That's a uh, bold move. I actually yeah. I saw you tweet the other day that said something as long as you don't have uh you're not overly sensitive on, and you're not going to have a kind of a conniption, a conniption at every single Trump sticker. You're going to have a great time here. Yeah. I mean, that was a funny tweet. Yeah. The funny thing, and that's absolutely true. Like the funny thing, I mean, this is a red state, although it's not a super red state. It's not Alabama. It's not Mississippi. Uh, you know, a lot of people, if, if you don't understand the South, like there's different areas of the South and the Carolinas are not quite as conservative, but still like, you know, if you're, you know, if you're somebody from Connecticut and every time you see a Trump sticker, you, you just have a seizure like it, it, you're just like you're not going to be able to function on here. If you can just sort of tune that stuff out and you know, yeah. then this is really like it's it's super cheap. The weather is awesome. It's sunny a lot. The worst time of year is actually the summer. The summer it's like really humid. So it's not that pleasant. But like, you know, spring, winter, fall is really great. Um, you know, I love it. Yeah, so I'm a big windsurfer, so I go up to the Outer Banks, which is North Carolina, and I think it's some of the most kind of underrated beach area in the U.S. period. Like, yeah. it's just, it's, it's outstanding. So, uh, yeah. Jared, just to, to change the subject a little bit, like, I know our good friend Tony Greer always gives you the gears on your electronic dance music. <laughs> I can't help but ask you. Like, yeah, I've been DJing for about 11 years, and, uh, I, you know, I, I love the music, and whenever I have a chance to, you know, put on a show, it's usually in New York city. Um, you know, I have a mailing list and, you know, the dirt net people know like when there's a party in New York city, and a lot of them come out. So it's, yeah, it's a fun hobby. Oh, well, why don't you give us the, if anyone's a kind of an EDM person and wants to get on your list, how did they get signed up for your, uh, your list? Yeah. Just go to, uh, www.djstochastic.com. That's DJ. Nice. S T O C H A S T I C, which obviously is a fun trading yeah. joke. So yeah. we get a, we get a lot of uh, yeah. uh, kind of technical, what I like to call squiggle traders, because of Patrick <laughs> practices the dark arts. Um, you know what? When you said Tomorrowland, I kind of laughed. I thought to myself, Neverland. Um, obviously, that's not the same thing. What, no. Tomorrowland is like some sort of uh, festival. I'm I'm googling it here as we speak. It just looks like there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, millennials consuming vast amounts of drugs. Is that basically what it is? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm not really into the I'm not really into the festival scene. Like the festivals, I think, are super annoying. Uh, you, you're out there in a field for like ten hours a day. It's hot. You know, people are like crashing into you. Like it's just you know, I I prefer going to clubs. Like I don't really like you know the big uh, festival sound. I like the small room sound. Um, so it's just, it's just a different environment. Okay. I always laugh because I found out, I, so Jared, I'm useless at this and I, and I, I don't know anything of electronic dance music and some younger person was trying to teach me about it and he was trying to, they were trying to tell me how much some of these DJs will make in, in Las Vegas. And I was blown away at, at what a good DJ could commands in Vegas. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? The, the the CEO of uh, Goldman Sachs, he might be he might have been better off being a DJ. Yeah, I don't think so. But even still, like, those guys those guys in uh, those guys in Vegas make like four hundred thousand a night. Uh, at, you know, at the peak in two thousand fourteen, when EDM was like really exploding, it was about seven hundred thousand a night. Um, wow. So but that's a lot know, of bread, man. Seven hundred you know, a night if you work. Yeah. So you can only work three nights a week, right? Because you work 
Monday, you work Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Is that right? So seven hundred yeah, well, a week. It's, it's actually one times. Uh, no, is that just from? Is that just from the gate admission shit? No, that's no, what they not. pay. Listen, they pay. That's what they pay these guys. Yeah, but the economics of that are basically you have a bunch of people buying tables, you know, for five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand bucks. Uh, you know, like it's big high rollers getting tables plus drinks plus, you know, I mean, the club probably clears, uh, I would say a million a night. So to pay a DJ 400,000, if he's bringing the crowd is not unreasonable, you know? Yeah. Fair yeah. enough. You know, but the, mm-hmm. but the, 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 the biggest clubs, like, I don't like it. Like I said, like, I like this, I like the small room sound like that. A lot of that music is not for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, All right, let's, let's talk, talk about Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, yeah, I know. I screwed up with the. Oh, the, no, the no, you didn't screw up. Right. Listen, but Jared, uh, l- let's let's talk to Marcus because, wow, just the last two days have been nuts, right? Uh, so, we, we, you know, Powell, first of all, uh, sucker punching the market by not giving them what they wanted. And then Trump uh, sucker punching uh, the market right back. And so we had basically uh, uh, this, uh, this pop in the dollar that's already uh, pulling back here. But the stock market's not liking this. I I mean, we're pretty much now about 70 points off the highs, 80 points off the, the highs. Uh, do you think this is the beginning of some sort of a market correction? Is this going to uh, sustain for multiple weeks? Are we going into a, a deeper pullback? What's your thinking here on the markets after seeing the 48 hours here? Yeah, I actually, you know, it's, it's funny. Like uh, I, I wrote in my newsletter earlier this week, I'm like, I don't know about stocks here. I literally, it's, I said, I just had a hunch. This is just like trader's instinct. Like I'm not, I'm not, I really don't, I don't have anything concrete to back it up. It just didn't feel right. And uh, if you go back to the last, I mean, the last two few corrections we had, the one in December and then the ball explosion and there was another one, those were all V tops, right? That was, those were V tops. And you don't, you, you don't end a bull market with a V top. And what, if you look at the chart right now, we are actually sort of forming out a U top or just rolling over slowly. Uh, it looks so if you if you take today's chart and you hold it up against 2007, it looks kind of similar. Um, so I know this is all very unscientific, uh, but yeah, I'm not I'm not super positive here. And I, it, you know, it's been a, it's been a really long time since I've tried to lay out a short, and I'm I, you know I don't know I kind of want to do it, but I'm a little a little scared. So. Right, right. And how? What's uh, what's your thinking here on uh, on some of the these periphery? Like, do you track all the European markets and so on, or are you just predominantly focused a lot on the uh, the U.S. equity here? Or do you have do you have some market calls just on what's happening in the euro stock or these other uh, European markets? Uh, not so much. Um, not so much continental Europe, but I've been focusing a lot on the U.K. and Brexit lately. And I seem to have a very out of consensus opinion that uh, really? that the pound w- will rally on a no deal Brexit. Um, you know, I off mean, of a lower level. I mean, like we're, we're no, talking. October, no, so right? listen, I'm with I'm with Jared here. I'm going to interrupt uh, Patrick. I completely agree. I think we're we're down and out this thing. I've been buying pounds lately. I think it's a great purchase. I think you could stand in here now buying this. right now, that, right now. Yeah. Like I, I listen. I'm actually in agreement with you guys. I just think you guys oh, are shit. early. I no, just no, think you're Jared. early. Well, that's good. Like, that's good that you think we're well, early. So, Jared, yeah, are I, you buying it here? Like, are you buying them here, or are you waiting for the no deal? Uh, I, I, I would say I'm at about half my position right now, and I bought a quarter of it about a month ago, and I bought another quarter of it a few days ago. Um, I'm. I'm similar. I started guys, a, a day or two ago, oh and I'm God. I'm halfway there, and I'm gonna buy more on on any bad news. It is you, dirt cheap, buddy. It is so cheap. You're gonna I'm you're gonna get a reaction. Look, look. Okay, no. listen. Okay. Is is the pound ready to bounce and be back at one twenty three, one twenty four? And you guys can clip three hundred pips. Congratulations. That's you know you guys are no, no. probably gonna it's be right higher, on that. Man. But no, this is not the turn point. This is not the the bottom. I I'll, I'll right now stick my neck out. We're we're heading down to one fifteen. Like, okay. I mean, now, whoa, 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 with we that have the said, makings of a bet. We have a makings okay, well, of a bet. How, what is that? That's six handles lower. So yes. I say it, I say it hits 128 be- or 127 before 115. You're done. You want to do stakes or you want to do uh, like you want to cheap out because you don't feel so good about it? 
Look, all right. I Patrick, no, but listen. Just tell me steak no, 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 burgers, stop, buddy. stop for stop for a second because I think that we even if it got to one twenty six, one twenty seven here in the next reaction because it's oversold and it's gonna fuck him out. Okay, okay, and Patrick, so it's Patrick, gonna do. I'll, that, give, but, you, I'll but, give you an extra two handles. I'll give you an extra two <laughs> handles. One twenty nine versus one fifteen. Done. Done. Okay. What do you want? Burgers. Okay. Burgers. It's burgers or steaks? You pick. burgers. Burgers. I feel, burgers. I feel. Yeah, you don't feel as confident. Hey, well, uh, you Jared, want? We, listen, we, we, we make a fucking steak dinner bet like every episode. I, know, I mean, how I many know, steaks can okay. you eat? Well, anyways, listen, uh, Jared. Let, we bur- like to bet on these things all the time. So, uh, and 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 he's been. Uh, although he's been right a couple of times, he still he still <laughs> is the guy that's doing it. So tell yeah. me, you know what? We we interrupted you. We interrupted you. I'm no. sorry. We interrupted you to do our bet. Why don't you tell us why? But you I'll, think by, that, by oh, the way, the, I'm the I'm buying the dip at one fifteen. But let's go, Jared. What, okay, what, Jared what's tell your, us why you think you should own the the, the pound. Well, first of all, uh, I think that uh, I would I would I hope that it goes to one twenty nine, but I fear that it goes to one fifteen. And I actually think I think that's the more likely outcome. Uh, oh, there, there's I love like, it. You know, so I, I love it. Boris. You know, Boris Johnson, I didn't I didn't know a lot about Boris Johnson. I did some research. But more importantly, have, have you ever, like, I listened to his voice without watching TV, without looking, without looking at the hair, right? Without looking at him, without looking at the hair. Just listen to his voice. This is a guy that gets what he wants, and he is in a hurry. And everything about his actions, everything he has said, that his cabinet that he's put together, everything communicates – that Britain is going to be out of the EU one way or another on October 31st. That is going to happen. Okay. So I, I agree. I agree so with that, you there. I agree with you there. So then it's just a question of, you know, what is uh, the, the market reaction going to be when that happens? And a lot of people view that as really negative. Uh, people say, people are saying, you know, it's going to parity. Uh, and, you know, I've always thought that Brexit was positive for the UK in the long run. Uh, you know, so what I'm concerned about with this position is that there's a big flush uh, in the interim and I get stopped out. Uh, but, you know, yeah. Well, OK, so here's here's my thinking, Jared. I completely agree with your analysis, but I think that they're going to do fiscal. And when they do fiscal, you're going to find that it's, it's actually going to the economy is going to do better than we expect. And maybe you're right. Maybe we get the 115 tick, but I, I really think that we're not going to. And I think that the rally, I like to look at Euro, Euro pound, what I call the uh, BMW Jaguar spread. And if you look at that and you think back to, I guess it was, let's just pull up the chart. Can you pull that up, Patrick? Yeah, yeah. I'm pulling it up right now. So we had a move down in April when everyone got kind of, bullish on the prospects of Britain being able to negotiate it. Everything was great. And every hedge fund in the world was short Euro pound. Like they all were. It was one of the most popular crowded trades. And I think this whole move from 85 up to 91 has been a a process of flushing them out. And I kind of look at this as the bad news is increasingly all in this. And I'm not as bearish on euro in general so i just think they're both your only problem with your trade here is the fact that it's not accounting for the dollar because they can both go down against the dollar together and listen uh, yeah i know you're a big dollar bull what do you think jared we haven't got your opinion where is the u.s dollar the next month year and five years let me change the subject actually let me divert you um so (laughs) Well, let's you know. Let's talk about dollar cad, and let's have a conversation about that. Oh, uh, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so I I don't. Here, do you, maybe you can help me understand some stuff. Uh, okay. I doubt it, but your, we'll try. Your econ- your economic statistics are a disaster. Like StatsCan is a mess. You have unreliable statistics, and okay. uh, like there's no there's no chance that. A hundred thousand people a month are getting jobs in China. I don't care how much immigration there is; it just doesn't make any sense. And you know, I like I think the view there's this there's this is prevailing view that Canada is exempt uh, from this slowdown that seems to be happening around the world. You know, and as I look at the rest of the data, I'm like, I mean, what the hell? Like, why? Like, why is that? Why don't you guys tell me that? 
Oh, I actually, I'm with you, buddy. I'm, I, I've recently become somewhat bearish on Canada. I think that uh, we think our shit doesn't smell. <laughs> and I actually think that uh, shorting Canadian banks and buying U.S. banks is one of the greatest, like, kind of trades for the next year or two. Yeah, I mean, but people have been talking about that since 2013, you know, so no, why I now? I agree. I Well, why now? First of all, a couple of things. One of the big kind of key components to this was the fact that everyone thinks that the U.S. is a lower tax state. They all like if you ask people what would a, a U.S. bank pay in tax, they would have said, I'm not sure, but it was going to be significantly less than the Canadian banks. Well, I can tell you the figures. The U.S. banks, the median bank in the XLF paid something like 30 percent over the last decade. OK, in Canada, that was 20 percent. So with ta- with trucks, um, trucks, with Trump's tax cuts, we're actually in a situation now where that is being lowered to the same. So now no longer are we having kind of the, the, the situation where we have a tax benefit. So that's part of the reason we've done better, okay? The other reason is the fact is that we've had um, our consumer has been expanding credit for the past, let's say, 20 years because the reality is that we didn't have the pause in 08 like you did. So we have been uh, – the banks have had a tailwind – of a consumer that's getting more credit cards, getting more houses, all this shit. Like it's just basically one thing after another. It's all worked out well. So we've had a better tax rate. We've had a consumer that's been expanding. Everything's been great. Now, what's changed? We have finally hit the point where we cannot put any more debt on it. And although, you know, like we can, we can, like I'm not a big one to say like, uh, um, I'm not a debt alarmist. I do believe that on the private sector, there are limits. And I do believe that Canada's hit it. And at the same time, I think when you look at the U.S., I think that the millennials there have been reluctant because of what they've seen happen to their folks during the 08 crash to put any sort of debt on. So I just think Trump is going to go and he's going to figure out a way to get the housing going there. And it's going to be a tailwind for the U.S. bank. And the Canada is not going to shit the bed in terms of like, you know, have the same sort of catalytic, too many beers, uh, contraction that the U.S. had. But the reality is that we're going to suffer and we're going to underperform you guys for the next kind of five years easy. That's what yeah, I Yeah, I mean, it, that would that would make me happy. But like in the, in the short term, I mean, we have the possibility that the Fed is going to cut 100 basis points plus, and Palaz doesn't look like he wants to cut at all. Yeah, but that's only going to be bad for our economy over the long run. I mean, do you think he's forced to cut? Um, Okay, so here's a little tidbit I have, uh, I'll tell you. They think um, that they really do believe, the Bank of Canada really believes that our shit doesn't smell. They yeah, think I know. that our economy yeah. they believe our economy is as strong as as as, yeah. as those statistics. And um I, I'll tell you, I, I was out the other day and I was talking to somebody that uh that was selling to, to these different um to these different developers up in northern north of Toronto and uh, like although our, our cranes and, and stuff in Toronto with the condos are going like gangbusters, the the single family homes are suffering. And, and yeah. you look at Vancouver, it's already rolled over in Vancouver. And, you, and the fact that China is having trouble. Listen, we are not immune to the same problems that Australia is having. There is no doubt about it. And so you asked what's going to be the difference? The difference is that we finally got the other parts of the uh, kind of equation working against us. We don't have China being able to, like, you know, stimulate. We don't have um, all sorts of, uh, like, let's face it. We're not going to get the, the, the easy money from, from China. There's no way you're going to get all this Chinese money coming in and buying Vancouver homes like they did. And, so, and Jared, you're right when you say that there was all sorts of crazy shit happening. I tell the story about the fact that I have buddies that sell their homes in, in Shaughnessy, which is a fancy Tony uh, kind of neighborhood in Vancouver. They would get their homes bought by numbered Chinese companies, and they would rent them back from those people. And they would send them checks, like a series of post-dated checks, and those checks would not be cashed. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I, mean, I, I, I don't know what you guys know about my involvement with this trade. Uh, you know, I, I, oh, I know it's you. I know you've been like a short for a long time and thinking it's the like you've been you've been calling for it a while, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and actually, I started uh, I started uh, shorting CAD in 2013 when it was at 101. Um, so that has worked out. And actually, you know, my target all along has been 160, and now I'm kind of uh, reevaluating that. Um, but uh, you know, the the banks have been a terrible trade. I paid I paid just a ridiculous amount of money in dividends. So um, yeah. That's why I, that's why I think you have to be long something on the other side. That's why to me being long against the US banks is is a no brainer. You also look at the price to book. Our price to book is way more than you guys because we are supposedly so much better ba- managed and all this. But yada yada yada. Like I really think the Canadian banks are versus the US banks are just an, a slam dunk sale. Like that spread trade I just think for the next kind of 5 years you just you just sell it and forget about it because you guys you guys hate your banks and we overlove our banks. That's the, that's the long and short of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so that's, that's so so you so you were expecting us to defend CAD. We're not going to defend CAD at all. In fact, Patrick shits all over Canada all the time. He's the <laughs> biggest bear there is. Here's the question I have for you, Jared. I think that Australia is worse than Canada than Canada. Uh, it sure think? it sure seems that way. Uh, you know, I, I I wisely have decided not to shore Aussie. Uh, I think Aussie's just a tough short. Like I just, I, I have, I don't know. I can't figure out the price action on that currency, so I just kind of stay away from it. Uh, and there's no, um, there's no banks listed in the U.S. No Aussie banks listed in the U.S. So I, I, I don't really have any skin in the game. But you know, the people I talk to in Australia, they're like, oh yeah, this is this is bad. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But yet the banks are roll. I mean, rocking right. Like, that's the problem. Again, yeah. we have a situation where their economy, it looks like it's like their, their real estate's rolling over, their economy doesn't look so hot, yet because of the, the easy monetary policy, the banks are rocketing higher. So, yeah, I'm showing a chart here of the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Like, yeah, the thing, it's crazy. It's gone from 65 to 85 bucks almost. And is uh, that in Australian dollars or US yeah, that's dollars? Yeah, that's on the ASX. Yeah, and see, that's a problem. You know a trade that I've liked for a long time, Jared, is I liked actually shorting Australia CAD cross rate. Mm. And, and I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why I like that. I kind of looked at it and I said, Australia's biggest trading partner is China. Canada's tra- biggest trading partner is the U.S. You get rid of all the U.S. dollar kind of you know, currency reserve shit, and they're both commodity trades, and like, you just kind of think to yourself, to me, it's basically saying that Ch- U.S. is going to beat China. And that's how I've looked at that trade. And so far, it's worked. Yeah, I've got, it's been great. I mean, it went from like ni- 98 down to like 89. Yeah. Uh, are you still, so you I, still have it on? I still have it on. I'm trying wow. not to look at it. <laughs> trying not to look at it. What else do you like, Jared? What other trades you got for us? Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up here pretty soon. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go home and get a cigar, um, which, <laughs> which is, which is like my new hobby. Like actually your new hobby. Recently, you got to leave yeah. us with one idea, one idea before you leave. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I kind of gave you guys a bunch of them. Uh, <laughs> let me... no more. That's it. You're done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're cut off. Uh, I, mean, I, think, I mean, really like, I, I, you know, I think my best idea is the, is the steepener. Um, you know, I, one, one way or another, either Trump is going to get rid of Powell or, or he will get his message across or the Fed will just figure it out as an institution and, uh, they, they will cut rates more aggressively. Um, okay. So what part of the curve do you play? I do twos tens. Yeah. Yeah. You like twos tens. Yeah. Okay. I'm with so you. Are, like you're you're well. not shaken out of, uh, with this last little move. You still think it's a good level to put it on? Yeah, I do. It's, you know, I mean, it's just hard. It's hard for twos tens to go negative with absolute rates in the one handle. That's just hard to do. I might go negative. Uh, If it goes negative, I might, you know, I might put on more. Um, You know, I mean, ultimately the curve, this is a trade I'm not really worried. I don't lose sleep over. Like I have a lot of confidence in this trade. So I think the curve should steepen. Having said that, it's a bit crowded. It is a bit crowded. Uh, There's a lot of people in this trade, so... I agree. I agree. And it's a, it's a problem. And the, and I saw the other day, I'm with you, Jared, which is bad luck for you. Cause I, you know, things aren't going well these days for me with that. I'm a little bit of a bond bear, but anyways, Jared, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you for your time. Um, why don't you just give people one last time where they can contact you, where they can find your, your daily dirt nap and uh, give everyone kind of the, your, your coordinates before we wrap up. 
Yeah, please uh, check out the newsletter, www.dailydirtnap.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at uh, at Daily Dirt Nap, although sometimes I, I am a miserable bastard on Twitter, so just fair warning. <laughs> Okay, go have your cigar. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Thanks a lot, Jared. It was been a pleasure talking. Thanks, Thanks. Jared.